Hi Keto Diet App followers, I'm Nick, Nick Norwitz, lucky friend of Martina and ketone researcher at Oxford University. Over the next five minutes or so, I'm going to tell you everything I think you should know about omega-3 fatty acids. So here we go. There are three types of omega-3s, ALA, EPA, and DHA. ALA you get from plants and it's generally regarded to be inferior to EPA and DHA which you get from marine sources. Now, your body can convert some ALA into EPA and DHA, but this conversion happens only at a very low rate on the order of about 5%, which is not great. But here's a tip, you can actually increase ALA to EPA DHA conversion by consuming curcumin. Curcumin is the active component of the spice turmeric, and studies in rats have found that consuming ALA plus curcumin increases DHA levels in the rat's brain, and this correlates with reduced symptoms of anxiety, which is pretty cool. Another vegetarian option for EPA and DHA is algae oil. But assuming you're not vegetarian, you're omnivorous or carnivorous, you're going to want to get your EPA DHA from fatty fish. But I'm going to pause for a moment and tell you why you actually want EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are profoundly anti-inflammatory, and DHA in particular is amazing for the brain. It's a large component of the brain. Um, this means that EPA and DHA are going to protect against pretty much every chronic metabolic disease that you can think of. So in fact, I encourage you to pause the video right now, go on to PubMed, type in your favorite metabolic disease of choice plus EPA and DHA and see what pops up. You can choose cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, really whatever, and I almost guarantee something will pop up. Um, again, DHA in particular is really important for the brain. It's important for neural development in fetuses and newborns, neural maintenance in adults, and preventing cognitive decline in the elderly. In fact, it's known that DHA levels are depleted in the brains of people with cognitive decline and dementia. So you really want to get your EPA and DHA. Actually, one thing more I want to mention is that there's a whole theory that the brains of humans expanded because of EPA and DHA. This is Professor Michael Crawford over in England, um, and he's in the Hall of Fame of the Royal uh, Society of Medicine, and he actually got the Chevrolet Medal for this theory, which states that our brains were small when we were confined to the African inland, but when we migrated to the African coast and started to fish and get access to EPA and DHA, our brains were allowed to expand. We had the substrate to help our brains expand. So it's possible that our brains are the way they are because of EPA and DHA, because of fatty fish. And there's a lot of data to support this. I'm pretty convinced by the theory. Anyway, moving on, I advise that you get your EPA and DHA from SMASH fish. That's an acronym that stands for salmon, mackerel, anchovy, sardines, and heron. These are five fish that are pretty common and accessible in the UK and the US and are rich in EPA and DHA. In particular, my favorite is wild Alaskan sockeye salmon. The reason I love wild Alaskan sockeye salmon is it's not only rich in EPA and DHA, it's also rich in something called astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is an antioxidant that you can kind of think of as EPA and DHA's cellular bodyguard. That's its purpose. It protects these vulnerable and valuable EPA and DHA fats. Another really cool thing about astaxanthin is it's not just an antioxidant, but it's also a carotenoid pigment. It's what gives salmon their beautiful pink red color. So remember with salmon, the redder the better because redder salmon have more astaxanthin. And wild Alaskan sockeye salmon in particular are really rich in astaxanthin as compared to other salmon and other fish. So go for the wild Alaskan sockeye in my opinion. But moving on, um, there's actually a best of the best omega-3. So the best DHA form is something called lyso-DHA. Lyso-DHA is short for DHA conjugated to something called phosphatidylcholine. And the reason lyso-DHA is such an exceptional fat is that while most omega-3s and most DHA need to diffuse into the brain, kind of like a tea bag diffuses slowly into water, lyso-DHA has a special transporter that shoots it straight into the brain called the MSF-D2A transporter. So lyso-DHA has privileged access to the brain, which makes it a super, super fat. Um, good sources of lyso-DHA are krill oil and salmon caviar, which is salmon eggs. Other fish roe, fish eggs are also great. The last thing I do want to touch upon in this omega-3 video is omega-6 to 3 ratio, omega-6 to 3 balance. So it's important not only to get your omega-3s, but also not to have too many omega-6s, which can overpower the omega-3s. They kind of fight each other like a tug of war. So the ideal ratio is about one to one. You do need some omega-6s, but most people have a ratio of more like 12 to one. Omega-6s are everywhere, so you wanna be really careful about over-consuming omega-6s. The number one thing to avoid is processed seed oils, things like soybean oil and corn oil. But you also wanna watch for omega-6 sources 
um, in whole foods like walnuts. Walnuts are actually touted as a great omega-3 source. I would argue that's not the case because it's all ALA, which was we said is not great. And they have much, much more omega-6. So like an ounce of walnuts has, I think, 10,000 milligrams of omega-6. So when it comes to nuts, I personally go for low omega-6 nuts like macadamia nuts, which are um, the lowest in omega-6. So in summary, as I see it, here's your omega-3 hierarchy. You got krill oil, salmon caviar, and roe at the top because they have lyso DHA, which has privileged access to the brain via the MSF D2A transporter, followed by wild Alaskan sockeye salmon because you're getting that awesome EPA and DHA plus the astaxanthine to protect it, followed by other fatty fish, the smashed fish, salmon, mackerel, anchovy, sardine, and heron, followed by some EPA DHA supplements, including algae oil for vegetarians, followed by ALA sources like flax and chia, which have ALA but are low in omega-6, unlike walnuts, which are really rich in omega-6. So I hope you learned something. If you like that, I can make more punchy five or six minute videos and have a good afternoon. If you like this video and learned something, then please check out the link below where you can pre-order our science-based cookbook that I have coming out in collaboration with Martina and our friends Thomas and Rohan. This book is the first of its kind to include omega-6 to 3 ratios, full saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated fat breakdowns, and it's jam-packed with science and fun facts that will nourish not only your stomach, but your mind. It comes out in March, but if you pre-order, we'll send you some bonus content and maybe it'll get the message across to our publishers and Amazon that people really want books that actually put the science and nutrition. So thank you for considering and just check out the link below.